Hi, in this video we are going to talk about how to work out the highest common factor, uh, it's often abbreviated to HCF, or the least common multiple um, of two numbers. So we're going to start straight off with just some examples, some simple examples, so we can talk about what a highest common factor means. Um, so a highest common factor, those three words tell us what it is, it's, it's the largest um, factor which is common to both numbers and common in this sense meaning which is shared by both numbers. So a very simple way to do it with, with low numbers like 8 and 12 is to look at all the factors of those numbers and then pick the one, the highest one, which appears in both lists. So it's reasonably straightforward to find the factors of 8. Um, you can start off just writing a list, things that times to make 8, and those are your factors. And if we do the same with 12, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Now to find the highest common factor we have to look for the highest number that appears in both lists, if you like. And I think that's going to be 4. So the highest common factor in that case is 4. And that's just the biggest number that both 8 and 12 can be divided by. You can divide 8 by 4 and get a whole number answer, and you can divide 12 by 4 and get a whole number answer. Let's have a look at a slightly more complicated question. So this one's more complicated because we're going to have to find lots of factors for these numbers. Now we're going to try this one, this question, 42 and 70. Um, by listing factors, but after that I want to show you a, um, a better method for large numbers. So if we try 42, we get 1 times 42, 2 times 21, 3 times 14, I wonder how many people would spot that one, um, 4 can't go into it, 5, 6, 6 times 7 isn't it? Okay, I think that's it for 42. And if we go for 70, we get 1 times 70, 2 times 35, 3 doesn't go into it, 4 doesn't go into it, 5 times 14, 6, 7 times 10, 8, 9, they don't go into it, do they? Now, this one, again, we can look in these lists here and we can try and find the biggest number that appears in both lists. Um, if you looked at and you wrote down 2, because you can see 2 in both lists, you'd get one mark for finding a common factor. But the highest common factor here is 14. It appears in that list. It appears in that list. However, I suspect there will be people out there who would have missed 14 in either of those lists um, because we don't generally know our 14 times tables and Perhaps you don't think of that as being a number that we could go into it, so um, it can get a bit tricky. Here's a better way to do a more complicated question. You will need to know how to do a factor tree for this, and um, there is another video on our channel which is describing how to use factor trees to um, write a number as a product of prime factors, so you could look that one up if you need to. Let's go ahead and do a factor tree for 132. That's 2 times, what is that, 66, and that is 2 times 33, and that is 3 times 11. So, let's just check that, 66 doubled is 132, isn't it? Yes. <coughs> so, this is my factor tree, and I can write 132 as a product of prime factors, just like that. Let's do the same for 156. Okay, 2 goes into that. What's that? 78 times. And that is 2 times 39. And 39 is 3 thirteens. And those are all prime there. So if we look at 156, I'm going to write it under here because you'll see why in a minute. 156, 2 times 2 times 3 times 13. Now, this method works really well because 
I don't have to know whether 39 goes into both of them or anything like that. I can just look at the prime factors here. Now I can see that you know lots of people would write down that the highest common factor is 3 because I can see 3 goes into this number and I can see 3 goes into this number. But I would argue that I can also see 6 in this number and 6 in this number. 6 goes into both. There's a 6. 2 times 3 is 6. And there's a 6. 6 goes into this number as well. And furthermore, I can see there's an even bigger number. If I underline all those bits. Look, this is a 12. I can see a 12 in here. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. And 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. So I can see that 12 goes into this number 13 times. And 12 goes into this number 11 times. So 12 is my highest common factor. So I've put two ticks there to indicate it's the highest. That's the best answer. If you're going for a highest common factor, you do want to find the highest number that goes into both. If you were to write down three or six, you might get a mark, but you won't get full marks. Let's have a look at another couple of questions. We have, where is it? There is the highest common factor of 76 and 48. Let's go for 76. That's 2 times 38, which is 2 times 19. So we can write 76 equals 2 times 2 times 19. And 48 is 2 times 24, which is 2 times 12, which is 3 times 4, which is 2 times 2. All of those are prime numbers. And so we have 48 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And again, we can do the same trick here. I can see 2 goes into both of those. Right, so 2 is a common factor. But if I extend my line a little bit, if I take into account some of the other prime factors that I see, I can see a 4 goes into that and a 4 goes into that. So 4 is my highest common factor. What about 90 and 72? Let's have a look at these ones. 90 is 2 lots of 45, which is 3 lots of 15, which is 3 lots of 5. And 72 is 2 lots of 36, and that's 2 lots of 18, that's 2 lots of 9, and 9 is 3 3s. Again, if I circle the prime numbers, There we go. So if I look at my 90 and my 72, like that. There we go, I've gone to the bottom of the page. So if we look at that, you can see 3 goes into both of them, but there's a 9, isn't there? Look, if I underline those ones, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 3 is 9, goes into both of them. There's also that 2 there. So if we look, this number here, 2 times 3 times 3, features in the number 90, 5 times. And 2 times 3 times 3 features in the number 72, 4 times. So that is our highest common factor. It is 2 times 3 is 6 times 3 is 18. OK. So the highest common factor is always the product. Can't see this. Let's just move that up a little bit. The product of the matching prime factors. Okay, so you find the matching prime factors. There's a 2, there's a 3, there's a 3. They match both of them. And if you multiply those prime factors, you will get the highest common factor. Let's have a look at the least common multiple. Now, the least common multiple type problems are normally expressed as wordy problems. So this is an example of a problem that is really um, a least common multiple problem dressed up uh, 
with words into a sort of physical situation. So it says the number 75 bus leaves the depot every 12 minutes, the number 41 leaves the same depot every 15 minutes. If the number 75 and number 41 both depart at 10 a.m., sorry, 10 a.m., what is the next time they both depart together? So you could have yourself a little list here, much like we did to begin with with the factors. We could write a little list. We could say, okay, well, the number 75 is starting at 10 o'clock and it's going every 12 minutes. So let's just go up 12 minutes each time. going to write 1060 then that's stupid 11 o'clock okay and the number 41 bus is leaving at 10 o'clock so that's when they went together at that point so they both left at the same time but this one's going every 15 minutes so we have 10 15 10 30 10 45 and then 11 o'clock so you can see that 11 o'clock here is the next time that they go together 11 o'clock is the answer you would look for in that situation. But that's really just an example of a least common multiple problem. A least common multiple is the lowest number that both 12 and 15 will go into. So you could have solved this problem by just writing out the 12s and the 15s. And saying, oh look, it's after 60 minutes. 60 minutes is the least common multiple of 12 and 15. It's the lowest number that's in the 12 times table and is also in the 15 times table. Let's have a look at some more examples of that. We'll do these using lists and then again there is the uh, factor tree method for bigger numbers a little bit later on. So the least common multiple of 16 and 20. So if we just write out the multiples of 16, uh, what's next? 64, and then it must be 80, 96 plus 16. What's that going to make? 112. Okay. And then if we go up in 20s, we get 20, 40, 60, 80. Ah, there it is. Okay, so the least common multiple is 80 in that case. The least common multiple of 8 and 14. Well, 8 and 14, just do the times tables. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. 56, 64, 72, 80, and I could carry on with that. Let's see if I need to. 14, 28, 42, 56. No, I didn't need to. So 56 was the least common multiple. See, that one was a little bit more difficult, perhaps. I had to go a little bit further along my times tables. And when you get fairly horrible numbers, it becomes a bit a bit much doing these lists. Let's do this last one, 21 and 28. So 21, 42, 63, 84, 105, 126, 147, 168. Might need to do a few more there, I'm not sure. 28, if I do the 28 times table, 28, 56, add on 28. Um, a quick way to do that is going to be to add on 30 and then take 2 off. So add on 30 and take 2 off. Add on 30 and take 2 off. Where are we? 140 for that one. 168. Ah, there we go. Okay, so in that case, 168. Now, <coughs> that is quite tricky for a lot of people finding 
keep adding on the 21s or the 28s you can imagine that with even bigger numbers it gets a little bit impractical so what we like to do is use a method using the factor tree the factor trees can break everything down for you and make it really obvious once you learn the method um, what the least common multiple is going to be so 28 and 44 let's do factor trees 2 14 2 7 so we get this factor tree here and 44 is 2 22s which is 2 11s like that now the method that I'm going to use to work out the least common multiple actually involves working out the highest common factor first. We saw just earlier that the highest common factor in this case, um, well let's write them out, 28 and 44. The highest common factor here is 4. Now this is the way that I do the least common multiple. Um, I haven't yet worked out a decent way to explain why it works. Um, it, it's sort of something I think you get a feeling for as you um, get more proficient at it. Um, so the least common multiple is always going to be the two numbers multiplied together divided by the highest common factor. Now in that case it's 28 times 44 over 4. Now you might not want to do that sum but what you'll know is that you can actually simplify the top and the bottom of this fraction very easily. If I want to divide the top and bottom of this by 4, instead of having 28 times 44, well let, let's do this, divide the top by 4, divide the bottom by 4, okay? 28 times 44 divided by 4, well if, in, if I think of that as 44 lots of 28, and then I'm dividing it by 4, that I think makes 11 lots of 28 and 4 divided by 4 makes 1. So really, you can always simplify like this. You can divide that by 4 and divide that by 4, and you can get a much simpler sum. 28 times 1, uh, sorry, 28 times 11 is a bit easier to do. So you do 28 times 10, and you add 28, and you get your total 308. Ignore the divide by 1, Divide by 1 is just the number that you had, so we had 28 times 11, 308, divided by 1 is still 308. So the answer for the least common multiple in this case is 308. Let's take you through a few more of those because it can take a while to get the hang of. And generally speaking, to be fair, they don't ask numbers like this in your GCSE exams very often because these are these are quite large numbers. These are quite complicated calculations. They tend to keep it a little bit easier, a bit more like the bus question that we saw earlier. But just for the sake of completion, um, it would be useful for you to see how to do this using factor trees. So 120 is 2 lots of 60, which is 2 lots of 30, which is 2 lots of 15, which is 3 lots of 5. Let's circle those. And 96 is 2 lots of 48, which is 2 lots of 24. OK, and we get these two here. So let's have a look at the highest common factor. You can't see that bit there. We go. Times 3 times 5. And 96 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So I think we've got that as our highest common factor. That is 2, 4, 8 times 3, 24. And the least common multiple is going to be 120 times 96 over 24. Now I said every single time you'll be able to simplify this to make your sum easier. Let's just have a look at what happens if we try to divide the top and the bottom of this by 24. 120 divided by 24, do you want to simplify it that way? Or do you want to do 96 divided by 24, do you want to do it that way? It's up to you. I'm going to choose mm, 120. 
OK, so I'm going to divide the top and the bottom of this by 5, uh, sorry, not by 5, by 24. Just like simplifying fraction. Now, from my highest common factor, sorry, my product of prime factors here, I can see that 24, that's what I've underlined, goes into 120 five times. So I am going to Instead of writing 120 lots of 96, because I'm dividing by 24, I'm going to write that as 5 lots of 96. And 24 divided by 24 is 1. So you end up with 5 times 96, which you can do in a variety of ways. Um, I would times by 10 and then half it. So 5 times 96 is 960, divided by 2 it's 480. Now again, I will stress, this This is an example which is not going to come up on your exam, so don't worry too much if I'm losing you here and, and I've chosen pretty horrible numbers. This is just to illustrate the point that you can use factor trees, um, and if you can get to this step here, I'll be um, you know, pretty happy with that, and then with simpler examples, you'll be able to simplify that a lot easier. That's it.